Hi, I'm Tony Candela, author of Automotive Wiring and Electrical Systems. In this video, we're going to cover SPST relays, and that includes three different types. Now, if you're going to master the relay, you really should be comfortable looking at them from this angle, um, looking directly at the electrical terminals. But don't worry, because every relay that I know of has an electrical schematic of the terminals printed or embossed or screened on it somewhere. In the case of this Radio Shack relay, it's right on the top. And it corresponds to the number of the terminal, which is embossed in the case on the bottom. That's going to be kind of hard to see in this video because it's black embossing on a black case. Now let's discuss real quickly what each of these four terminals do. Um, this is an SPST relay and on the left here we have terminal 86 and that is one side of the coil and on the right here we have terminal 85 and that's the other side of the coil and shortly you'll see when we send 12 volts to one of those terminals and ground the other we can cause the coil to be closed. Down here we have terminal 30 that is the common terminal for the switch and up here we have terminal 87 that is the normally open terminal for the switch so at rest this relay has no connection between this terminal and this terminal and when the coil is energized these two terminals will be connected together okay now that we've got that down let's talk about the SPST relay now on the trainer we have three of them we have a four terminal SPST and we have two five terminal SPSTs and believe it or not these two are different we'll show you that shortly now firstly let's look at how the four pole SPST really works these are available at your local Radio Shack they're six or seven dollars they're okay they're not great they certainly will work for um, small current applications um, and they make a good example for for this illustration so we're going to use our SPST switch over here to connect power to the coil and then the other side of the coil is connected to our power supply ground. So the first thing I want you to hear is I want you to the relay turn on and turn off. The relay is energized and now it's unenergized. So you can hear the the coil caused the switch to be moved in either way when the relay coil is energized and then we take power away from it. So let's look at how the switch itself works. Easiest way to do that is with our digital multimeter. Um, and I've got it set up so when I short the probes together we can actually hear an audible confirmation of continuity or a connection. So let's connect these probes to terminals 30 which is this one and terminal 87 which is this one. So we'll connect those two probes across those terminals. Notice we have no continuity and when I power up the coil of the relay I now have continuity. That is the most fundamental way that a relay works. So moving on to the five terminal SPST relay. Um, the main difference is that this relay has two terminal 87's, one located directly above the other. So now many people confuse five terminal SPST's with the traditional SPDT relay and for obvious reasons it also has five terminals which is why it's critical to always look at the legend embossed on the side or the top of the relay for the exact electrical schematic or operation of the relay and the uh, terminal configurations. Now this relay functions exactly like the four terminal SPST. It has a common and two normally opens so with the coil not powered there's no connection between either common and either of the normally opens and when we power the coil we now have a connection between the common and both 
of the normally opens. Now, if we turn the relay back off, let's just look at continuity between the normally open terminals. And you'll notice we do have it. So that's what makes this relay different from this one. I'll show you that shortly. Now, this relay is commonly included in fog light kits of all kinds. Um, so you can connect power to the common terminal, which would be number 30. And then, you know, some of the fog lights go to one of the normally opens and some to the other. Um, if you had a 30 amp SPST uh, five terminal relay and you connected it that way, then each of the accessories could uh, pull up to 15 amps, 15 plus 15 being 30. Now let's move over to the other five terminal SPST, which is very different. And the main difference, it functions the same way as regard to the switch goes, but the main difference is that at rest, we don't have continuity between the normally opens at all. So obviously no continuity between the common and either normally open, but no continuity between either of the normally opens. So now when we turn the relay on, we're gonna have continuity between the common and both normally opens. Now when the relay is on, you will also have continuity between the normally opens. Turning the relay off, no continuity. Now a common use for this relay would be say connecting two accessories that are electrically independent of another so that you could connect them both to the same source of power. Um, for example, many European cars have independent parking light circuits. So the user can operate the left parking lights independently of the right parking lights, etc. Um, so if you were putting a security system in such a vehicle and you wanted to flash all of the parking lights but still keep those circuits independent, you would use this relay. You would connect the left parking lights to one of the normally opens and the right parking lights to the other and they would be electrically isolated unless the security system was going off which would cause all of them to flash. Now on the legend on this relay which is on the side and you can't see in this video it also calls out that one of those normally opens is called 87B. So anytime you see a relay with a metal case that has an 87B, that is this type of SPST relay. So now that you know how SPST relays work, let's put one to work in a real world application. You'll notice my trainer has two small electric fans mounted to it. These would replicate a set of larger cooling fans that you may use to cool the radiator in your vehicle. So what we would use a relay for in this application would be so that we could switch low current from the switch to the relay and the relay could be used to control a high current accessory. So very simple to connect. We already still have our relay hooked up so we can turn the relay on and off via the switch. Now let's actually connect the switch terminals of the relay so that we can operate the accessory, in this case the fans. We'll do so by connecting 12 volts from our power source to one side of the switch and the other side of the switch in the relay to our electric fans. Now when we turn the switch on, the fans are powered up. Turn the switch off, and the fans are powered down. This allows us to control a high current accessory from a low current switch. So that's it for SPST relays. Um, next video we'll talk about SPDT relays and later on we'll talk about solenoids. Um, again, if you'd like to know more about this topic you can pick up a copy of my book, Automotive Wiring and Electrical Systems, and you will find even greater detail as well as application and projects on how to use relays. Until next time, I'm Tony C., and I'm out.